In this section, we're going to study about smoothing splines and generalized additive models. So in the last section, uh, we've talked about regression splines, um, and we were dealing with this example where we had multiple measurements of the uh, tricep skin fold in uh, um, different individuals and its association with age. And we've seen that the relationship was not linear, and we con constructed these regression splines which are uh, uh, much more flexible than um, the linear model, obviously, but also more flexible than the uh, polynomial regression that uh, would require one single polynomial to be fitted to the entire range of values. And in particular, we looked at uh, the cubic splines, both with P-splines and natural splines versions. And uh, I've mentioned that uh, uh, cubic splines were uh, quite flexible for most of the situations. Now, one thing that we didn't explore uh, much was the choice of knots. So I told you uh, before in the one of the, in the first section, I believe, that the knots that I've chosen were chosen in a, a ad hoc manner. So I placed a knot at the age of five, and then ten, twenty, thirty, and forty. Um, so this was uh, again not chosen in a principled way. So now I'd like to talk a little bit more about the the, the issue of the knots. So I think it's easy to understand that um, the more knots you, we place, the more flexible curve we will we'll have. So basically, the residual sum of squares that uh, um, summarizes uh, the fitness of the, the curve to the data will be dependent on the number of knots. So if we place a lot of knots, we'll be, re re we'll be reducing the residual sum of squares. And obviously, it also depends where I'm going to place those knots and so on. Okay, so here I have the represented um, a B spline with five knots on the left side and with 25 knots, and you can see that the one with 25 knots is uh, much more rough and will result in a, a small residual of squares, but, but it seems to be overfitting the data. So how many knots should I have and where should I place them? So this is actually a, um, a problem that has been tackled for some years now. And that's a that's quite a nice solution to to this problem, and the idea is the following: rather than then uh, being concerned about the number of knots and even where they are placed, we're going to allow the fitting to have um, many knots, and but penalize for the roughness of the final curve. Okay, so more knots is are, is going to increase the the roughness of the the, the fitting. So we're going to penalize. Uh, this, the residual sums of squares by the amount of roughness of the curve. Okay, so you might be, you might recall um, from your maths that the the first derivative will give you the the slope uh, of the curve at each time point, and the second derivative tells you how much the slope is changing. Uh, so the second derivative is really a measurement of of this this idea of roughness, how you know wiggly the the the, the fitted curve is. So we're going to use the second derivative uh, as the the um, penalization uh, term. Okay. So this follows a very similar idea to the uh, regularization problem that we've seen before, where again I'm going to to place a penalization uh, that will compensate for the complexity of the model, okay? So this penalty term is going to be called the roughness penalty. So it turns out that actually there's a very nice uh, theoretical result that shows you that the, the solution for this problem, so the, the estimate for the f of x, is a natural cubic splines with knots in every observed uh, value of the predictor, okay? So that's that's actually... Um, there's actually a closed form solution for this problem. But in practice, we don't put a knot in every uh, observed axis, and that's also the problem of uh, if you have um, multiple observations with the same x, what you do. So instead of putting a knot in, um, in every single x, we select a, a large enough number of, of knots, and then we choose the penalization by cross-validation. Okay, so... Uh, in practical term, terms, we, we actually don't need uh, to um, to select uh, 
the same number of nodes as, as number of uh, um, different values of x. It's enough to select a large number of nodes. And uh, again, there's algorithms to choose uh, what is large enough uh, for the, the, the problems. Uh, if we have uh, enough observations, uh, this value can be usually above uh, uh, 50, but that's, that also is going to depend on the function that you're using. Okay, And the place of the nodes uh, by default are ch uh, chosen uh, using the, the quantiles of the, the function. Okay, So you're going to, to have bet in between the intervals defined by each node the same number of observations. We can change that and we can actually choose the places where the nodes are going to, uh, to occur. But the default of uh, uh, smoothing splines functions is usually to choose the used quantiles to, to select the position of the nodes. So here I have represented um, uh, um, a smoothing spline, so a spline that was fitted with a large number number of knots. I believe here in this case, some uh, around a hundred and, and something knots. Again, the um, the functions usually uh, select uh, uh, a large enough value of knots that fit that that will be fitted. So in this case, uh, I'm using here the smooth dot spline function. And I'm also uh, using the leave one out cross validation that is given by this option CV equals true. Otherwise, uh, the smooth spline is going to use the generalized uh, cross validation. For some reason, I'm not sure if it's related to ties or this. There's something uh, weird. If you if we use the generalized uh, cross validation, which is an approximation of the true cross validation, but usually works well. But in this particular case, gives a weird solution with a lot of wiggling in the in the curve. So if you if we um, uh, go for with uh, the leave one out cross validation, despite the warning that R will tell you that there's, there's a few ties um, in the um, in the data, meaning that there's some axis, uh, some uh, um, individuals with the same value of x but it should be fine. Uh, so here you, you, we have represented then the smoothing spline um, based on, on cubic splines, but again with knots placed in, uh, um, with a large number of knots placed in different places and a penalization term that is going to penalize by the roughness of the curve. Okay, so basically the problem of uh, knot selection is, is solved because uh, we don't have really have to worry about about the number of, of knots, but this can be controlled as well if we, if we want to. So the final thing that you're going to study in, in this model is the inclusion of the smoothing splines in the generalized linear uh, model framework. Okay, so we can bring the, the smoothing splines and apply it to the same framework of generalized linear model so we can have some link function for the expectation of, of y. This could be, for example, linear model, just the, the mean of y. Um, and now I'm allowing that the effects um, of the, the, the predictors uh, can be based on smoothing splines, okay? Obviously, this only makes sense in the, in the cases of uh, continuous data or at least ordinal data. Uh, if x1 is a uh, dichotomous variable, it doesn't really make sense to put a spline. But so f, uh, f can be uh, the identity, but can uh, a function, but can also be uh, a spline. Okay. So the entire the entire framework of GLM can be extended to the use of the the splines, and this is what it's usually called in the literature by generalized uh, additive models.